Hey guys, in this video, we wanted to show you how we got from this to this. That's right. So this is our front planter bed. Uh, it started out very much just like a hill. Um, we usually put pine straw on this once a year. It would have a lot of weeds and a lot of leaves over the fall. Um, and so we're showing you here a little bit about what it might look like. Um, so this is where we're starting to put the layout. Yep. And so our plan was to have two tiers of a planter bed, which means that we needed to dig out a little bit at the bottom and kind of build up a little in the mid-level. And you see a little green sploosh in the middle. That That is a uh, pine that we had there. <laughs> this is an itty bitty pine. Yeah, I think at this point, oh yeah, I think there's also a Japanese maple or or, ginkgo. or a ginkgo in there that we needed to move. Because um, we did have things planted on the slope initially before we decided, you know what, we really need to make this more of a planter bed and have some landscape architecture there in place. Right, and we're trying to do this in the, uh, in the winter, spring, early, I think this is around February or so, just to give everybody an idea of when we're doing this. So anything that's deciduous already has lost its leaves. Um, so here you can see we've started to dig out a little trench in the front. Um, and the point of that is that we know we're going to have to dig down a little bit to put the front of the planter bed timbers into the ground. Right, because if you just place them on the grand ground itself, dirt will start to like kind of seep out through the bottom. So they really do need to be buried into like the native soil. Um, and so in this shot here, it's a little wider. You can kind of see the pins on each side. Uh, we already have some gravel there. I don't know if we have the concrete yet. I think I do see a few bags of concrete. Yeah, we do. Um, and so we're starting to really plan it out. Um, and we had this idea of doing a tiered planter bed because it's a slope. It's a pretty significant slope. Uh, and it's really about the only thing we could think of to make it work. Uh, we would be weeding on this hill normally. It's at a slope. It's just hard to manage. So we wanted to flatten it out so that we had just a better accessibility. Yeah, it was definitely too much of a slope to have the grass continue up the slope and just mow it. Um, in this situation, we are going to be doing a 30-inch tall planter bed wall, not a retaining wall. <laughs> right. So we're going just under 30 inches. And the reason for the 30 inches is by code in our area, if we go past 30 inches, it's considered a retaining wall. It has to have permits and uh, groundwork, and you have to have ground percolation tests. It's assessments of like where your property lines are and all of that mess. Right. So it's a it's a big mess and a lot of cost to do that. So we're staying under that. Uh, we're also going with a more modern look, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, we have done this before at a previous house, and so we thought we'd give it a try. Uh, so this here, this is uh, a hole. I mean, what we're seeing is <laughs> yeah. it's a hole. I'm using a post hole digger to dig these holes out. Uh, we have a lot of roots, so uh, anything like spinning just isn't the best idea, like an uh, auger. Yeah. Uh, like if you hit a root with an auger, you're in real you're trouble. You're going to go flying. Uh, but also you can kind of see a little bit in this, there's like a trench that's been dug already next to that hole with like kind of a trench digger. So like just a shovel that's a skinny shovel. And then we also were going to use, uh, so this is starting to get to the modern side of it, we're start going to use some aluminum C-channels for some of our supports. Uh, these are a C-channel. It's literally the, looks like the shape of a, shape of a C or a U uh, if you're looking at it straight on. And for a lot of them, we're going to end up putting them back to back, just like this, uh, where you can see that they really stick together. Uh, what we're doing essentially is just screwing them together. Yep. Um, it's, I, I wish there was a product that was already shaped like this, kind of like an eye beam type of thing. Uh, and it's aluminum, so we don't have issues with rusting. Um, and actually, in this particular photo, these have been sitting out in our yard for many years, so they're just dirty. So we're just kind of buffing away the dirt there. At least three or four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we just... We tried, I think we tried a rag at first, and then we tried something else, and they were like, oh, you know what, sandpaper, let's just, just sand them. and Sand the dirt off. Sand the, the dirt, dirt off. That's great. All right, and then you can see this is this is the corner post, so this it's not going to be actually back-to-back -back because it's at the corner, and it's changing angles. But you can see how it goes into the hole there. Uh, right now, those are going a little bit more than a foot down. I think I was trying to get the 16 or 18 inches down into the dirt. Um, so you can kind of see uh, how far down I'm going. Oh, one other reason when I'm talking about using dirt work uh, and you making holes, uh, I was also using a hand uh, hole digger because I don't want to use a power tool in case there's any utilities underground. Right. Um, an auger will rip right through yeah. whatever's under there. Yeah, we did get um, a utili the utility, local utilities to come and, and mark things, but I can't remember if we did this later and I was like, you know, thinking better of it, we should probably have these marked. Yeah. You'll see in a little while that like, yeah, we should have gotten it marked earlier. Yeah, it's okay. Um, okay, so then 
here is again you can see our pile of concrete our pile of gravel um if we were being smart and economical we probably could have gotten the gravel from a like a gravel yard instead of the bags but the bags were fine um and so here is me working on the piece of wood uh so our c channels are like the hole in them is like 1.25 inches or one inch and one quarter like one the, and a quarter the inches. how wide they are the inter internal diameter not right. diameter but you know the width yeah and the boards are an inch and a half and so we had to take off a quarter inch of material at the ends uh, and all these boards just so you'll know they are pressure treated two by tens they are mostly what we're using um, and we've done before where we did a shosugiban or yakisugi where we burned them and put a finish on them. This time we just put a stain on it. Like, and a stain is basically a paint, but doesn't take primer first. But we put a stain on. It's uh, I think it's tricorn black is the color. Yeah, this could either be tricorn black or onyx. I'm not quite sure. If I'm I pretty sure it's tricorn black. There's Anna. Yeah. Working on I'm it. Routing it stuff out. Yep. Just uh, just a framers triangle or square. Um, Right, that just keeps us from going too far. It gives us a guide. Um, oh, and Anna's wearing a P100 mask here. Uh, I think she just didn't want to breathe in this. I don't know that you have to. Oh, well, wear it's it for pressure treated. It's pressure treated. Oh, it is lumber. pressure treated. Yeah, okay. it's pressure treated. That's why. Okay. Uh, so moving on. So now we have one row in. I don't think these are actually installed. This is our test. Right, and what we're doing here is that those. Posts are not concreted in yet. We were using the boards to help level and square up and plumb up those aluminum C channels. I had totally forgotten, but that is what we were doing. And you can see even on the top right, the uh, you can see a clamp that's blue on the top right uh, on the aluminum post. Um, and the reason for that is that I have screws in there, but this will really hold it exactly where I want it while uh, it's curing. Also, on the right side, the little dust that you see, that's kind of the gray dust on the on the uh, board, that is concrete that we've poured in there. So we're using the quick crete, the red bag. I don't know what you call it, but it's the kind you can pour in there and then get wet. Yeah. And so that way we just poured it in dry, and then we put water in there, and we kind of mushed it around with yeah. the rebar, and, uh, and that got it wet enough that it could set up. Uh, it did rain a couple times after this, too, so it really got... Yeah, saturated it was later. Good. Yeah. So yeah. So right now we're just using the boards themselves. They are just sl they're just slid down into those slots. So right. they're not actually attached. They're just there to kind of keep the spacing correct between the posts. And at some point, I decided to put a screw through the back of the aluminum channels into the boards. Yeah. I don't know if I've done that yet here, uh, but I might have just to keep it all in place. Uh, but the other thing is it keeps the uh, aluminum exactly where we want it while it cures right and there's no uh right now we will put a layer of gravel under the bottom first row of yeah. timbers and that's not there yet either and so that's just it's again this is just holding the aluminum in place plumbing. right just getting the aluminum set first and then we'll work on the rest and then here you can see at night uh if you have a laser level Night is better for actually seeing where level is. Well, especially the red one. Now we've since gotten a green laser level that you can see a little bit better yeah. during the daytime. But at this time, we had the red one. And we had run a line. You can see that's what the red, there's a red line. Like even more neon red looking thing that's actually a string. Yeah, that's a string. And then you can see the red line at the very top of it. So what we're trying to do is get the aluminum C channels to be even with each other all the way across. Um, and that is harder done than said. Uh, well, or easier said than done. Oh, yeah, no. okay. I, I was looking at me weird. <laughs> easier said than done. I like uh, how you get sayings wrong all the time. Uh, it was easier said than done, though. The uh, it was hard to get these pretty level uh, with each other. And I think we used a uh, we had a little laser, a little bubble level that we put on the string, but then we also reinforced it with the laser. And just remember, we're working with a hill that's a hill in two directions, not just one. It kind of slopes to the right, three dimensional. Forward. Yeah, and then uh, it's the C channels aren't necessarily perfect, and my holes aren't necessarily perfect, and they are at least ten feet apart because these are we're working with two by tens. Uh, so then the next day, now yeah, we set up at least two of them, I think, if not several, and so this is showing the next day where we uh, try to have uh, do more of this. You can see in the corner. I really hope we haven't set it at this point because that would be bad. Oh it's yeah, really... those are not set yet for sure because they're just kind of sitting in there. There I am, looking yeah, all yeah. proud. Uh, I should note. Around this time, I can't remember, I was either about to have knee surgery or I've already had knee surgery. I think knee surgery happened in the middle of this project. So you haven't had your knee surgery yet, but 
I look at myself, I'm self-conscious because I feel very large in this photo, but uh, well, I hadn't, hadn't been able to walk yeah, you hadn't in been about able to a walk. year. So uh, it was, I mean, I walk, but I couldn't like go on a walk. Um, so anyway, so that's that's what we're doing here. Oh, uh, all right. So anyway, oh, there I am. So if you see me laying down, it's because I don't want to bend my knee because it really hurt. Uh, so this is us trying to give level, and this gives a really good idea of what is level. So on the left side to the right side, that board, I think, is close to level at this point. And so that's really given an idea of uh, where, like, how much like, of a Yeah, the elevation change. And this isn't even the steepest part. Like, right. This is, this is a pretty not steep area. Yeah, well, and so, so you know the goal that we're reaching is that we will be three boards tall. Yes, and three that's, boards tall. So we're gonna on the high side. On the high side. So that's what's happening over here. Is that like where Spencer is? It's bottoming out into the ground over there. But on the right side, facing the street, some of the boards will be buried by a couple of inches into the ground. And on the driveway side, there, one of the boards is going to be buried a whole lot. Um, and part of this, I should say, at this point, I'm definitely putting a screw through the back of the aluminum because otherwise that's just magically holding on in yeah, the air. Yeah, it's just floating there. So I think I put two screws. I used a drill with a uh, drill bit for metal, and I drilled through the metal, and then I put just, I think it was just construction screws through it. Uh, and that was holding the board exactly where I needed yeah, it. Yeah, I think at this point we just rifled around for whatever screws we had and then later went back and replaced them with ones that would be more water resistant and weather outdoor rated ones. Well, and I'm sharing all this, the reason we're sharing this, like all this information, not just here's what we did, is that if you wanted to replicate it, we're trying to tell you all the steps that we did uh, so that you could try it for yourself. Uh, obviously, we're doing this very DIY. Um, so anyway, that's why we're sharing. Oh, hey, there's our Oculus Draconis back there in the pot. Has that yeah, been the pine tree? Yeah, has that there. been hanging out there this entire time? Or? Yes, I think we had that there for about eight months oh, yeah, that's or so right. before we, just... we actually decided to plant right. it because we were we knew we were going to wanted to take on this project but we um, didn't know exactly where we were going to yeah. place that guy so there's anna getting making sure it's level oh and you can see in this photo the old railroad ties that are falling apart in a pile back there um at the upper edge of of yeah of the pine straw yes uh and that's part of what encouraged this whole project is our retaining walls are falling apart because they're made out of railroad ties and they're like 40 years um, old. later in the year we're actually going to be doing a new project where we replace an entire railroad tie uh, retaining wall with a new cmu block one um so anyway other stuff let's keep on going with this project making sure things are the right height and whatnot oh and there's our cat uh so she is a very good construction cat uh, she enjoys being there and watching what we're doing. Good supervisor. Yeah, she she likes to give her approval or not. Uh, this gives a really good idea. So that's now level. It shows uh, level. And you can see we've dug out below that. I think the photo is a little askew, so it's looking like it's heading downhill a little bit. But yeah. Uh, and then let's see. We'll keep on going. All right. And this is the trench that we really dug out here. So this we're using uh, a couple tools, but the main tool we're using is just a pickaxe. To dig this, right? Pickaxe, and then we have a skinny trenching shovel that is that width, that exact width that you kind of slide down there to pull out most of the material. And then also just like a, you know, like, oh, uh, loppers clip any Yeah, roots. I was going to say, you can see the loppers in the background, and those are because we're hitting so many roots. And like a little, like a little hand spade just to get in the little nooks and crannies. All right, this is another show of where level is. I don't know that that is even level. I think it's actually a little bit less. Uh, yeah, I but think just it's to give an down. idea of the slope that we're dealing with. But yeah, it doesn't look that dramatic from the front, but it's kind of crazy. Like once you start going uphill, how fast it goes uphill. Right. And there's Anna working on, uh, so you're just with the hand trowel digging out some more dirt. And it's finished. We have a finished line of dirt dug out. Uh, those uh, aluminum bars go even further down the sea channels. And if you notice at the end here, I'm just going to point out that this last C channel is just one facing back. It's not obviously two because that's where we're stopping the boards. Right. We Our land actually continues pretty far past this to the right or behind us in this photo. Uh, but we just thought it gets even steeper there and would have been harder to deal with, at least for the first time of us doing it. And this is from the other side, just showing again what it's looking like. We now have a chair there because <laughs> I needed to sit down more. You needed more. a sit break, yeah. 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 Uh, all right, and then uh, just working on more of... What are we doing there? Let's see here. Oh, here, so what I'm doing is I... Well, I mean, that's a jigsaw. 
So I'm cutting it in half, I'm guessing. I don't... We didn't have a track saw yet. Oh. So I think I was cutting it with a That jigsaw. doesn't seem very... What, we... Seems like I would use a circular saw for that, but I think we're cutting... Oh, it... I know what happened. Okay, so the areas where, like, on the very side of the... Where I said with some boards were going to be buried a whole lot over by the driveway side when you make that one turn... Um, it was like buried the majority of the board. So we're just cutting it down. So we, it's, some of it will still be buried in the ground, but we don't have to dig down like eight inches down into the ground. Right. So, so we're, we're just, just kind of lopping it off a little bit. This is just from the other side. Oh, you can see the, we put a two by four, we got smarter. And instead of putting our level across, we put a two by four when put a level on top of it, which isn't there right now. Right, to which get, let us go farther to, up. To slope. give us like an idea of like, where is, where about is the next level that we're going to dig out? That's right. So what we're doing here, you can see the tape measure too, is yeah, we're trying to determine where the next row should be. And we're trying to go a certain depth back. I think it's like four or five feet by code. Uh, and so that's what we're trying to do, even though this is unpermitted. If they ever come and look, we might as well be right. That's true. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's cat. Yeah, she's, she's a construction cat. She wanted to. She check never out all the goes into the car. That's fun. That's probably why we did that video. Uh, and so this is showing the front. Now we started to dig out uh, the holes. You can see my hole digger, uh, and we're starting to dig out where the post will be for the second tier. And it's starting to get late in the day. Yeah. And now it's the next day. What are those white? Bits. Is that just lumber that we had laying around? Yeah, we have lumber out there. Uh, we start using lumber to try to get level and all that stuff because you want it. Our goal for this was for the bottom of the back one to be even with the front of the top one. Yeah. Yeah. Minus like an inch or two because we knew it was going to be just a little bit lower. And then also accounting for mulch, like a couple of inches of mulch too. Yeah. Now you can start to see more of what we're doing. Um, this just gives a better idea. So now we've started to test out what it will look like with all the pieces on there and do they line up where we want at the top of the aluminum channel. And they do. Uh, and now we're looking at, like, how does it line up with the one in the back, too? And also confirming that, yes, we like the stagger of our aluminum channels. So that was something that we were considering for a little bit is, like, from different angles, from the street, from the road... From, uh, from, from our driveway, like looking at like where do they aesthetically line up so they don't look like it was off accidentally. They were intentionally staggered from each other. Right. Um, so it just didn't look like a mistake. There's Anna in her in our Christmas cactus pants. Yeah, it's because I was gonna be sitting in dirt, so it was my the pants yeah. I could run. <laughs> so we don't have a ton of video. We mostly have photos of all this. Um, but this gives a good idea here of what's going on. And you can kind of see the materials around. Right now we've brought in like some landscape fabric. Roll is sitting on the driveway. <clears throat> oh, and not all of these boards were uh, stained. So I needed to go back after the fact and stain the backsides of some of these boards. I, what I did priority was staining the part that would slid down into the C channel because I wouldn't have been able to get to that. Well, and another pro point that you can see in this photo specifically uh, other than the cat over the left side that's overseeing our whole project. And taking a bath break. Um, so the other thing I start to see on these is I can see now four by fours in the middle of the two by tens back there. Uh, and Between the aluminum pieces. Yeah. And so those are tie backs that we're putting in that uh, we also made holes for those. So those are going into the ground, concreted as well. They're going to be behind the wood that we screw through uh, to get them to be tight. And then... Uh, and we're screwing through from the back side so you don't see the screws on right. the face. Right, we're using L brackets, I think, eventually. I and mean, it's really not the best secure way to do this. No, we might end up screwing from the front at some point, but. Oh, <laughs> and more photos Lounging. of Lounging. She found a little hole to sit in. All right, this is a different view. There's me in a chair. Uh, so that's a common sight for this. Uh, and so uh, we're starting to get going. Kind of shows more of the holes and the hole diggers and all that stuff we have. And here's from the front. There's Anna being proud back there by the tree mm -hmm. uh, where we're starting to actually make some progress. And again, this is trying to set the, uh, we're trying to set where level is now on the back side. Yep. And Spencer's wearing a face mask right there, I think, because we just didn't want to breathe in concrete dust. It was, yeah, the concrete really, yeah, you just don't want to breathe that in. So I was actively pouring concrete in there right now and dry, and then we'll put in water afterwards. And here's our little milling station that we have set up. 
uh, just to show like, and we're painting them later and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and all of that lumber isn't for this project. We just got a really nice deal on some lumber, so that's why we have it. Oh. All right, and this shows a good sh like example of what's going on now. So now we've changed from construction screws over to uh, you know ones that are meant for this water kind of situation, outdoor situation. And you can see that we've uh, cut down to the one and a quarter inch and how it goes into the C-channel. Um, and we ended up just doing this for all of them. I ended up putting screws in all of them just so they don't move over And time. that really was just, I was getting paranoid about the fact about the gravel possibly settling below the bottom row. Um, because I felt like I really couldn't get a compactor in there to crush, to like compact the gravel down as adequately as I thought. So I thought they could possibly slip over time and this is just added insurance. Right. So, oh, and here's the corner just to kind of show what the corner is looking like. Um, and so it's, I forget what the angle is, but it's it's the angle that we needed for the for what we uh, made it. You can also see the fabric here coming in. And this is, uh, what is that called? Landscape fabric. Well, actually, that might be the plastic. No, that's the landscape the fabric. fabric. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and again, this is the corner. So this is the only one where these two C-channels aren't fastened together. And I was a bit concerned of it opening up. Um, and it, it has opened up a little bit. It's like a year or so later. Like yeah, a year it's and opened half up later. maybe an eighth of an inch or maybe a little bit but more. But surprisingly well, considering it's not like actually connected together. Right. Uh, so it's it's all right. Yeah, and so we have the landscape fabric there just to keep any dirt from... It's down in there tacoing around the gravel to keep the dirt out of the gravel. And it's there to um, keep the dirt from seeping through the seams of the boards. And then this is just another view just to show kind of what we're doing. And there's Anna carrying the wood, yep. all the boards, because I could not carry them. Yep. They <laughs> were kind of heavy. They were uh, not the driest. I mean, they're PT, treated. yeah. Uh, so this is actually a sunny day, so... <laughs> it was like one of the show because it's February. We don't have much many sunny days here. Uh, so we're starting to work on it. You can see Anna over there working on it. So now we have all the boards in on the front. Uh, and I think around this is around the time I had my surgery, I think. Yeah. If I remember right, that we had the boards in the front but not the back. Um, but, oh, if anybody wanted, it was just a torn meniscus, so it was just a meniscectomy. Uh, so anyway, so... Anna's working on putting in the boards, making sure they're level. We screw them in the backside. We have the landscape fabric, and we're putting gravel underneath that. And eventually, I'll have a video where I talk about the whole thing. So here is the gravel behind. So you can see we have the landscape fabric go all the way up it. And you can see on the right side some plastic coming in, and that plastic is just a vapor barrier to hopefully keep the wood from rotting out over time so water's just not sitting against it. And the proper way to do this is if you would have had, like, for real, like, foundations and retaining walls and things like that, you would have had, like, kind of like a waffle membrane that's kind of like a plastic waffly texture with the landscape fabric that's, like, kind of adhered to it. And that makes breathing space for an, an air space between the wood and, you know, the dirt. But we didn't have that, didn't want to purchase that. Um, we did what we could. We thought maybe the plastic would help, but also maybe the plastic would ca capture moisture between the wood and the plastic. Who knows? We'll see how that we, goes. We weren't sure if it was a good move or not, but we had it and we decided to just go with it. Uh, and the plastic, the white plastic is lower than the landscape fabric because I was anticipating that, um, like, I just didn't want it to like pop up above the dirt and you would see the white plastic. Well, and people from here probably are wondering what is with your dirt that's kind of a red color. Because uh, in a lot other red, areas red in clay. the United States, yeah, in other areas in the United States, they actually have soil that's black or brown. Like actually, ours is like we have red clay here, and so that's most of our soil is clay, and so that's why we did the vapor barrier as well because clay doesn't really necessarily ever dry out; it just always stays. Or when it does dry out, it's a big problem because then it just cracks. So, yeah. And then here's more of the vapor barrier to give an idea, and you can see again the post that post obviously isn't installed yet or submitted in, uh, but that gives an idea of like the tie back. So we're doing. The C channels every 10 feet and the tie backs halfway in between. And here's another shot of what it looks like from above. And now we have, uh, we're just showing progression here. So now we have the plastic all the way down. Yeah. And that one, that second row on the left side of the, of the image over there by the two by four, that's a really deep hole. I think we had to like cut that C channel. Like it just, it was really deep compared to everything else. Um, just because it was just deeper than we thought. And we fortunately, we didn't run out of aluminum channel because this is stuff that we bought years ago. We almost ran out. We had like a foot of it left total. Uh, and C-channel, by the way, if you're trying to get C-channel like this, uh, you just want to go to your local, uh, like it would be a metal yard, 
or somebody that provides metal or steel. Yeah, this was not something that we were able to purchase from like a big box store. Yeah, you, so you have to go pick it up from them. They usually provide it in 20 or 25 foot lengths. Uh, you'll have to ask which one, but I think 20 foot is the more common. Um, and they'll want you to come pick it up. They can cut it for you. You can make sure to ask them, can you cut it into whatever foot length you need? And they can cut it, but it's going to be a cost per cut. Yeah, we actually rented a big old giant truck to get these back at their full length years ago originally because we just didn't know what lengths we needed, which right. is smart, but it was stressful driving a big, well, you drove the truck, but I was yeah. worried about bridges. Oh, and here's uh, showing just what it looks like when we're setting up the concrete. Uh, so we have the concrete in there. I have water in there. And now what I'm doing is I have that either metal or wood. I don't know what that is, but going up against the dirt just to hold it in place yeah, while just it Yeah, just to wedge it in place And you there. can see me using, now I'm using conduit. Uh, that's a, just a, conduit is just a bar of metal and uh, that's hollow. And I'm pushing it down in there. I'm just jamming it down in there over and over and over to get the water to permeate through the concrete. Yeah, and we have a bunch of conduit laying around because we use them as our stakes for our trees. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't started doing that for trees, by the way, for landscaping and trees, conduit is a great stake for trees. It's cheaper than, la than landscaping stakes, like what you buy at the big box store. Uh and it works just as well. Uh, so anyway, oh, anyway, this has here comes a video coming up that is me talking about what we're doing. So hopefully it's useful. Okay, so here's what we're doing. This is just explaining what we're doing here. So this is aluminum C channels that we have that we're putting our pressure treated two by tens in. And down there is concrete that is setting right now. Under this, we're putting gravel under there, and then. Uh, I guess it's garden cloth, drainage cloth to keep dirt from getting into the gravel so it'll drain properly. This we're flattening out so that it's even with the lower one or a little bit lower. Uh, we're also putting plastic on the back. This is just extra insurance to keep uh, the wood from rotting, just keeping moisture off of it. Um, we also have C channels. So we have C channels every 10 feet, just like this. And then we have four by four pressure treated posts every five feet going in from the back that we've toenailed in with this. And we might do a tie back here that will go back and make a T so that it keeps it from going heaving forward. Uh, even though everything is set in concrete, including the four by fours, that's not always enough to keep ground pressure away. Um, and right now we're working on this and there's Anna and she is working on tunneling this out. Okay. And now we're going to go to show the front of this. So here's the front of this. That mound right there is far too high, but we'll lock that down. Um, so if we get to even with it, you can start to see that that's about even with it, where the back one is slightly lower than the front one. And there'll be two rows right there and there. There'll be two rows of, uh, of soil for us to plant in, plant our bed areas. And so from the front, it just looks relatively clean. We're going to have to paint all these with another pass of, of black paint. Um, and there we go. And this one sets. So these are offset from each other by about, we think, two feet. It should give a good look. Okay, so I said two feet there. It's really more like four feet uh, or five feet. Well, I think you were meaning like the, the how offset the aluminum posts are from each other visually. I don't know. I, it's, it's anyway, the actual spacing between the first row and the second row, I think is a total of five feet because that's what it is by code. So we'll keep it going. Uh, so hopefully that was useful seeing what we're doing. So now you can see we have the C channels and uh, that is me falling down the hill because I have either recently had my surgery or about to. Uh, and uh, I have the impact driver in my hand because I'm trying to put uh, the screws in from the backside. And there it is at night. Oh, I'm even a blur. Oh, it's all modern photo with a blur guy. <laughs> and this is clearly at night where we actually got it done. So you can kind of see the offset here a little bit more distinctively of the aluminum uh, channels. Right. We try to not line it up. Like, yeah, we wanted a little bit offset. Yeah. And so when you're when you move to your right, they get even farther away from them visually. Right. Uh, and so this is kind of nice. This first time really seeing what it will kind of actually look like for us. That's why this photo is happening. Yeah. And a lot, even more photos. Oh, look at range. Look at all the, the rainbows of dirt splash. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then I put this in here just because to give people an idea of time. It's it's February, and that's when camellias start to bloom. I think this is the Frank Hauser. 
No, that's no. the Betty Sheffield something. Oh, Betty right Sheffield. Now. Okay. Betty, Betty Sheffield, Sheffield question mark. Supreme question mark. Yes. Oh, yeah. And there's cat. Construction cat. She's mostly an indoor cat, y'all. She just likes joining us outside. Yeah, she was hanging around. All right. And then, oh, now we have all the boards are on. Uh, and so that's an important next step, just showing, okay, all the boards are on. We have the gravel down. They may not all be exactly secure at this point. Oh, and now we've had utilities come in. Yeah, go straight through the bed. Uh, awesome. Yeah, so they came and marked utilities up to where, and this is a gas line just being marked here. And you can see it goes right through uh, right through where we were digging. Um, but it did, it we avoided hand tool. the post, all of the posts, the aluminum ones and the, the wooden posts. I mean, so, if, if it hadn't, we would have known because we would have dug right and hit it. I don't know. It's pretty deep at that point because it's mean, way underground at that point. Yeah, it is very far underground. And we, we, but this is why you use uh, hand tools rather than power tools. And also call 411 before you dig. That's true. <laughs> Unlike us. It is, it's free. I didn't know it was free. It's free. And upcoming is Anna talking about our gas line and everything. It was mainly for personal reference. So if we ever have an issue with the gas line, I know where it is in there. Okay, this is future reference of where the gas line is. So there's down by the mailbox. It's right at the corner of our driveway, kind of skirting like a couple of feet in from the driveway. I'll go down there in a second, but mainly this is right here through our retaining wall that we just built slash planter bed because it's under 30 inches. Um, this section right here coming across is around two feet away from that post. This is the section or the angled section in the cat. And then uh, this is the middle post for these two so it's about two feet there and then up the hill it's kind of like around goes from two feet to maybe angle to around three and a half feet away from that bar and then you can kind of see it go up the hill so we ended up having that really close to like where one of the posts were but anyway it worked out fine. Hand oh, tools so you don't go through them. Oh, yeah. And in this photo, you can kind of see that we still have been working around a Tamukiyama Japanese maple. It doesn't have any leaves on it. It just yeah. looks like a pile of sticks right now. But uh, we were working around that because we were like, maybe we can leave it exactly where it is, right at that corner. and It'll be nice. Maybe we don't have to move it. We yeah. Had, we had to move it. Yeah, we had, we had to move it. <laughs> oh, and here's the tiebacks. So we did do tiebacks. I'd forgotten if we actually did them or not. I yeah, remember thinking we, hard well, about it. Well, we, yeah, we didn't want to because it was work. But then we were like, we should do it. So we dug out some of the dirt that we had piled up in there. And to give the idea when somebody hears, oh, it was work. And they're like, oh, wow, I like put together like two boards so hard. There were so many roots and digging out that area. That was the work, was digging out for the tea. Uh, the actual putting the tea together was really easy. The... Oh, there were so many roots. <laughs> but uh, I, again, if if I was doing this more officially and properly, I would have probably made those T tie backs out of like four by fours. But this is the lumber we had on hand and we were being cheap about it. Yeah, I didn't want to spend more money. We had spent enough because so, we're going to have to buy dirt. Dirt's not cheap. Yeah, it isn't. Even though it's just dirt. Yeah. All right. So then we can see like you can see the gravel line here really well. Um, you can see like we have the gravel at the top. You can see our... Uh, what is that landscape fabric there that'll keep the mud out of it once we circle it back? Yeah, it was just going to be tacoed on back over on top of that line of gravel. And here it is kind of from the other angle where we have kind of pulled that fabric back on the front, the second tier on the front, and we've kind of packed dirt. Right, we started to put some dirt in there. And the the dirt that in there is just came from the hole that we dug further up. Like that's where just yeah, right, yeah, right the, now at that point. The front one. And here comes the dirt. Yeah, so we got a mixture of top soil and native soil and uh, uh no we had uh yeah it was filtered something soil filtered like organic soil and then which, it, it, and it, when it, they it, say it, organic just to make sure i clarify organic soil doesn't mean like organic vegetables that's not the same thing organic soil means 
organic it is, stuff. It's from right? organic material. That means it's decomposed. So you'll see in here that this uh, turns out like this, spoiler alert on the dirt. Uh, yeah, mistake, just get the topsoil because the other stuff that was mixed in there was just crummy, well, no, just, sludgy just get clay. get the filtered soil. Yeah. Because the topsoil is that filtered crummy, the crummy stuff. But there's clay in there. And, and the thing is, guys, we went to the place and saw what soil we were get, we should be getting, and then it was delivered and not what we saw in person. So the good stuff is the same, but the clay was different than what yeah, we saw. Yeah, so you can see the delivered. orangey color is the clay, and turns out it's worse than the clay that we had in our yard. It was like this weird, slick, sludgy, it sludge, awful stuff. It was uh, like from the bottom of a riverbed. Which you would think would be great, but it's really not. And it carries that's no. what my mom's advice was to me before I got dirt. She said she did the same exact thing as that when she had her garden 40 years ago. She went for the pond bottom dirt because she thought, oh, it'll be full of like fish stuff and nutrients and all this stuff. Turns out it's just completely desaturated of all its nutrients, yeah, sapped, and it it's got nothing. Terrible. Um, so the stuff we saw in person was just red clay. Uh, but this was not red clay. This is actually sludge. So I don't know where they got it from. It's definitely from their yard, I'm sure, but it's not at the stuff that we actually saw. In I do recommend putting down the tarps that would made for easy cleanup later for the driveway. Yes, that did. And we did move our car to the, the road so we weren't trapped. Yeah. All right, and then this is showing another area. So this is to this right side of our driveway. Uh, we decided that we wanted to have this as a little parking pad area anyway. And so you'll see as we continue, we start to pull more and more dirt from here. We'd already started to pull some dirt from here because uh, we planted some camellias and we needed that dirt for planting. Uh, and so anyway, this is going to be a big resource for our dirt for the planter pad. Yeah, because we were looking at the pile and we're like, this is not going to be enough. So now I've officially had my surgery. You can see bandages on me. And this is maybe a, a week or two after that. We took a little bit of a break while I was recovering. And then I'm using this as physical therapy, right? Cheap physical therapy. <laughs> uh, so there's mostly good, good dirt in what it looks like. And there's construction cat. She's helping. She likes to inspect. And there's Anna trying to stomp down the dirt. And now you're wondering about this dirt. Oh, and there's Anna's selfie time. Oh, yeah. I think you're, like, inside now because you're like, I'm done. And I look lovely. It was, even though February, it was very bright and hot. Yeah. And you know who doesn't like selfies? It, the cat, cat. The cat. The cat does not like selfies. There she goes. Yeah. She's just not, <laughs> not a selfie cat. <laughs> She's leaving. All right. So here's that area on the side of, of the driveway with the, you know, digging out for the dirt. Still another dirt pile photo uh, I mean, look I'm gonna put in cat photos okay <laughs> cat tats alright so then we started for anything oh there's a, you just look I just thought it was a good photo of you I was just like oh um, sure thanks yeah appreciate like, it look how cute you are you doing looking great you have your cactus pants on mm -hmm. so this is before we had the powered track barrow we now have a uh, powered track barrow that's a yard max man it probably oh, would have helped you that, a lot uh, it wouldn't have been able to get into that first tier but it would have been able oh, to get yeah, to no, the it, second it would have fit in here i think it would have Quite definitely compacted the dirt for it sure would have compacted the dirt, like yeah. 400 so you pounds. can see we're starting to put dirt in uh and so this is mostly like as we're going filling in with dirt so we're using a combination of the wheelbarrow and we have a garden cart and then we have another garden cart that was left uh, at the that, that, that one and so the 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 handle broke off as we were using it and i still used it as because <laughs> it was a nice like size to get in there so what we ended up doing is we put a lot of clay down lower, and then you can see like this is the final I don't know four or five inches of dirt, and we're putting we're putting as much good dirt as we can at towards the top. Uh, there comes Anna with some trees. Oh my gosh, it's time for layout. Uh, I think I think yeah I think we have all the dirt. So the dirt I think that was only over a few days that it took us to move it, and so these are all of the plants that we have been collecting over years I guess of what we wanted to put towards the front. Um, and so, well, uh, and we knew this project was going to be happening. So the summer before, when we had a trip to Michigan, we were driving through Ohio and we purchased some plants specifically for the future planter bed. Right. Um, from Byron Baxter. Hi, Byron, if you're watching. Anyway, uh, by the way, so we have a video that we just put out not too long ago. That's of the whole 
garden tour, like it's a two hour garden tour. The first 20 minutes or so are of this front planter bed. So if you want to see like, what are all these different trees? What are the, what are we planting? What does it look like now? Um, that's a good thing to go watch. I'd suggest that you go watch that because that's where we'll actually go through all the different cultivars and what we have. Uh, so then we start to work on the layout and like, what do we like? What's going to look good? Where? Yeah, like supervisor share from the driveway. So it's a bit of finagling. It's a bit of like putting things out. Like certain trees we knew we wanted to have like as anchor trees in the corners. And it was just a matter of just moving things around and staring at it and having all our neighbors watching us with our chairs like camped out in the front in the cul-de-sac. We would put them in the, yeah, we are in a cul-de-sac and we would put it in the cul-de-sac and look back at the, uh, look back at the house and be like, how does that look there? How does that look there? Uh, the one closest to us, that's a Fukuzumi, a uh, Japanese pine. And so uh, that one has a really interesting structure to it. So I wanted to have that as kind of a cornerstone uh, one. Uh, on the left side is a Mikawa. I guess I shouldn't go. It's all in the tour video. Go watch the tour video. It's really good. <laughs> we go through all of it. There's Anna looking proud with her thing at the very front of the planter bed. Um, so then we started. Oh, this was. So we had a Mikawa Yatsubusa or Yatsubusa. Uh, Japanese maple, which is a dwarf Japanese maple that we wanted to move. Uh, we had healed it into the ground here, which healed it in means that maybe you plant it halfway down. It's not fully, like it's and well kinda, above. And you kind of pile dirt and mulch up around it. So it's not like as difficult to dig back out. of. So we didn't want to lose it. It's a pretty valuable tree. We didn't want to lose it. And so uh, we just did that so that we made sure it was okay. And so then we moved it up here after a lot of struggle. What we don't have is all the photos and video of us struggling. That was a stout tree. Like, it looks like a small tree, but it was solid. That root ball, root was, ball it was, was in solid clay. I it mean, was heavy. It had to be 100, 150, 150 pounds at least. It was very heavy. Surprisingly heavy. Uh, and awkward to move. It was not... Yeah, you don't want to break any branches. And then when you grab the dirt, it would start to fall away in your hand. And, and you could see it starting to leaf out now. Uh, so things are just starting Running to push out. Running out of time. <laughs> Um, and so I have a few here that just shows kind of the layout of what we were doing. Um, and I guess at this point, if you were just watching just for the build of how we made this, I mean, I guess we're yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess we're done. <laughs> so now we're looking at the actual layout of the trees. Um, so I guess we could talk about what we're talking, what we're thinking in terms of layout. And so at least here, like this is the Oculus Draconis. Our idea here is that that is going to help block a couple views from the street to our house, give us a slightly more privacy when it's larger. And it also gives a good grounding tree as a background to some of the others. So we were doing a lot of looking at things from the street, looking at going inside the house, looking at what things look like from inside and from the windows and all that. Right. And then we have a little bit of back and forth here with the trees that we're putting in here. What we're trying to do is use the full spance of the area that we have to plant rather than just the front or just the back. And trying to anticipate uh, how big the trees will become and also you know, give them enough breathing room from each other and also leaving a couple of little spaces available. So if we have any neat purchases in the future, we've got some spots. Right. Uh, and also you can see from the front, you can't see the back and forth as much as you can from the side. And another thing we were considering was what looks nice against the black of the stain. Right. Um, and yeah, that was one of our bigger considerations. Uh, and then this is a boneyard find. It's an Austrian pine. Uh, that we had here, and we were. This is us trying to figure out how we're going to get it moved because it's pretty heavy. Yeah. So there's our garden cart. Um, this is again before we purchased the Yard Max, the powered um, track barrow. So this is what we had, and which is great because it's just a platform with wheels. Well, and this was heavier than you could lift on your own. So it, 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 any of these things where we have to lift again, I've had knee, knee surgery recently, so I have to be very careful in how I'm lifting. I'm surprised sure. we moved this thing, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I'm making sure I'm using my not surgery knee to lift. There's Anna with it. <laughs> <laughs> you look so thrilled right now. It, uh, again, heavy. Just show the size of it. And look at that. So, and then we decided to do, uh, oh no, I forgot the name of it again. The, no, not Nabari, uh, something Waki. I don't know. It's the Japanese thing where it goes back and forth and undulates. You plant, so this tree was, planted, it looks like we planted this thing. Um, then you can see the Austrian pine kind of beaming out in front of the silhouette of the house there near the, that yellow bucket. Um, it's planted at a slant on purpose because we wanted it to really kind of go that way and then correct itself and start leaning the other way just so it wasn't just straight Well, and, and the reason we yeah. got it, it already had the kind of Japanese look with the way it had already been shaped. Kind of cloudy looking. Um, so we just wanted to go for that and see what it might look like. 
So we tried for the angle just because, again, it was like $20 or $25. We can give it a try. If we don't like it, we can just cut it out. I mean, or like go donate to somebody. Dig else. it up and kind of like straighten it out again if it looks absolutely yeah. ridiculous. But I, I'm happy to say, so at this point, it's been two growing seasons. So this was the first. It was just about to start to grow. And then now this season, it's, uh, it is starting to lean back the other way, which is nice. Um, so this was a, it was a big debate on what we wanted to do there. And this is again, just showing from the front, uh, another bit of the planter bed. And then you can kind of see again, close up what's going on on the right side is a gold rush Don Redwood. It just is naked right now. Uh, but you can kind of see it just right over the bucket. Right. And we're considering a lot of these things are conifers that we have in the planter bed. So they'll be like nice and pretty all year round. But then we have some Japanese maples that we've planted in there. The Mikawa Yatsubusa is green. And then we also have like a uh, Tumikiyama weeping red Japanese maple and that it's on the left hand corner. And then we also placed another red towards the right hand side to kind of balance out the colors. Right. And yeah. the things that will be bald in the winter and have leaves in the winter too. This is where you can start to see what we're actually doing in the planter bed. So that was mostly placement before we did plant some. Uh, but this is putting down now landscape fabric. So you don't always want to do this. Like Actually, we ended up removing that. I think we did. Yeah. So what we instead decided to do is put down just a whole bunch of mulch. A whole thick, huge pile of mulch. Yeah. Um, but we did start with this because we thought we would keep the weeds from doing this. Uh, so we started to do that with the mulch over it. It was like, a, look, I've been battling weeds for four years in this yard, and I just really just didn't want to have yet another thing that I had to continue to like weed and like monitor. So I would put down the landscape fabric. And then I was like, I know it, you're not supposed to do that. And I did more research and no, you're not. You really need landscape fabric under like hardscaping like rocks. So I went back and I ripped it all out um, and I used it in other places later. Right. Um, so the cat approves either way though. Um, oh, and then this is kind of a fun thing. So uh, in our area, we usually get a uh, late freeze or a late frost. Uh, and so we had just moved this Mikawa. Uh, and again, it's a pretty valuable tree. I mean, $600 tree or so, like just to give an idea of we didn't, we paid $50 for it or less, uh, but it was $600 or so. A, so. a branch had fallen and lopped off the main leader. So the nursery sold it to us for super cheap, super cheap. So what I'm doing here is I'm building a box around it to put, uh, frost cloth around it um putting the frost cloth on it itself can sometimes do more more harm than good especially if it's going to be windy and i think it was going to be windy uh so i really didn't want to damage it but i really so that's didn't why the box it. so we didn't just drape the tree with the fabric itself we put it around the structure that we built right and stuck a, a light under there yeah i think in a second you're going to see that light i also did one in the back this is a different one towards the back where i just planted that one that was the orange we green. spent a whole day making the so, mixed well, I did. I think you were doing other stuff. I mean, I was like hobbling around with my knee. Oh. So, yeah, it was like, I wasn't making fast progress. No, I couldn't just true. go walk over, grab a board, walk back. I'd have to like go like and this with is my little whatever thing. pieces of wood. we. I think these are pieces of wood that came out of our house that we had like pulled out when we took a yeah, wall out of our house. Just whatever we had. And so, I, yeah, well, you can see now there's a light inside of there. And, and, the, and the key with the frost cloth going is, is that you don't want to, like, make it like a lollipop where it goes down and wraps around the trunk. It needs to go all the way down to the ground because the heat of the earth helps keep the thing warm in addition to the light bulb. Uh, and this is an incandescent, regular old, not LED light bulb. Uh, LED light bulb won't produce enough heat to do any difference. And here's the one in the back with another light bulb in it. Um, but anyway, that's a nice way to prevent it from getting frost damage, and it worked. Uh, you can see here, it's even green. You can see things starting to green up. Um, oh, yeah, it's a spring because there's, like, flowers coming in on our dogwood. Yeah. Back there. Uh, we did keep some landscape fabric down, by the way, where the weeds were the worst, like, the worst offenders. I think we did actually end up keeping some down, like, on the hill itself. Yes. Where we just don't want anything. Past myself and the cat, and you can see there's mulch. Now we have mulch. There's mulch on that hill. And that's where I put the landscape fabric because I was just like, I just don't want to fight with this hill. And there weren't many things planted there anyway. Yeah. So this is showing kind of the final result. So this is what it looked like shortly after that. This was that following summer uh, to give an idea. It wasn't quite summer yet because I could see the Oculus Draconis hasn't leafed out yet. But the grass had greened up. 
Um, and it's really kind of showing everything. You can everything. see the weeds on the hill on the right. That's how the whole thing used to look. Yeah, you can see the weeds on the right. All right. Well, here's what this looks like with a few more underplantings. We added a couple of irises and a blue star. And, and later on, we add a few more things and tweak things and remove some trees and change some things out. Right. And this is just later that following year. Uh, this isn't this year now. Uh, and so this just kind of shows like what it was looked like when it was starting to leaf out. Uh, you can see our Oculus Draconis, which is the pine in the background, is starting to push out its new growth, uh, which really looks vibrant and brilliant once it is fully leafed out. And then here's when a little bit later in the year where it is fully leafed out, you can see the Oculus Draconis on the left side with the white kind of uh, foliage and sun coming through it. Uh, but this gives a good idea of what it looks like. Um, this is obviously from a downward angle, uh, but it, it really has worked out quite well, and it's really kept the weeds away. Yeah, uh, so we put initial layer of mulch on the whole thing from a neighbor had extra chips from their chip drop, and then this past year we've gotten another chip drop and refreshed the whole thing. Yeah, and then this is from this year. I just took this uh, just to show you a little bit of what it looks like the following year. It's still kind of early in the spring when I took this, so everything isn't quite leafed out all the way, but that's how it held up for a year. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you liked any of this, please be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave it in the comments. We're happy to answer. Uh, if you have any suggestions of what we might have done better or what we didn't do correctly, uh, also feel free to share in the comments. Um, this is just a DIY one that we did ourselves. We're not professionals. Uh, and so I really don't mind somebody coming in and saying, well, here you should have done this or here you should have done that because that way everybody can learn from our mistakes. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.